Welcome. My name is Earl Netwall, and I'm about to present Internet Marketing for Local-Based Businesses. This presentation will be a bit of a pressure cooker with lots of content all in a short period of time. So strap on, strap in, and get ready, because we all know that things change. Things have changed, and they will continue to do so. In internet marketing world, a great many things have changed, and the speed of that change, as they say, keeps getting faster and faster. This year alone, Google has had two major changes to their algorithm that's directly affected how people like me, how businesses like you, get yourself seen in the search engines. And it has been devastating to many of my colleagues because we used to, and myself included, use what we call some gray hat, black hat type techniques that no longer work the way they once did. Instead, we got to do it the hard way, the right way. And in the long run, we're all going to benefit. But changes have occurred in a lot of other aspects as well. And we'll talk about them as we go through this presentation a little bit. Now, I want to ask you something. You've probably all heard the joke about the two hunters who are out in the woods when all of a sudden a ferocious bear is charging down the hill at them looking for some supper. One of them stoops down and ties on his tennis shoes. His buddy says, hey, you can't outrun a bear. And the buddy says, well, I don't need to outrun the bear. I just need to outrun you. Well, I have heard this joke. You've probably heard the joke too. But when it comes to Internet marketing for local businesses, the point of that story is this. You're not competing against the whole world. You're not competing against the bear. You're competing against the three, five, ten competitors you have in your local market. Your goal is to be better than they are at effectively using internet marketing. And to do that, you need to have a grasp of what the universe of internet marketing is all about because it isn't one thing. It is a lot of different things and you need to get your ducks in a row, not just in having a website, but in many other aspects that we'll talk about in this presentation. So the whole content here today is I'm going to do a little intro here in a second, and then we're going to talk to you about what we're not going to talk to you about and why, and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty and talk about what we are going to talk about and why. I hope you don't find that too silly, but let me introduce myself. My name is Earl Netwall. I've been working online since 1996. I started as an eBayer. I've got, oh, 12,259 individual customers who gave me positive reviews on eBay. I was a top 5,000 reviewer. Uh, you know, I started on September 23rd of 1996, and I made my living on, on eBay for a while. But ultimately, things change, as I said before, and I kind of got out of eBay and went into affiliate marketing and the blogging and other aspects of internet marketing and to the point where I became somewhat proficient uh, enough so that I felt uh, qualified to write a series of ebooks at various times first of which was most small business websites stink the fact of the matter is most small business websites still stink but you know we'll talk a tiny bit about that a little bit later I then wrote Main Street climbs to the top of the search engines and how local businesses can get themselves to the top of the search engines. And much of what's in that book is still true today, but a lot of things have changed. My most recent book, How to Get on the Google Maps, you can still go to Google, excuse me, to Amazon in their Kindle store and buy a copy of it. But Google Maps has now changed. It's now Google Plus local business pages. And again, Things have changed. So while there is good content in all three of these ebooks, things have changed, and I don't particularly recommend that you invest in them. One other thing that's changed, and what we're going to talk about, that one other thing that's changed has been social media has been the big rage uh, between Twitter and Facebook and so on. But in our presentation today, I said we we're going to talk about what we're not going to talk about in social media is not what we're going to spend a lot of time on today. Now, we'll talk about it a little bit. All you need to learn about social media is YouTube and Foursquare and MySpace and Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Squidoo and Blogger and WordPress. And once you got that, you got to realize there's new guys on the block. The fastest growing new guy is Pinterest. Now, you know, 
<sighs> Social media. It's where things are at, but it's not where I think you, as a local business, should be focusing the bulk of your attention. One reason is that social media can be a big time suck. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to get there. For example, an effective Facebook page, in my opinion and that of many experts, needs constant content, new content, particularly pictures. How often? Three times a day you need to be posting to it, and that's three different times of the day. Maybe morning, mid-afternoon, evening, five days a week if you're in business. And now I've got a test blog of my own, uh, a Facebook page of my own I'm experimenting with, with some new techniques that I picked up from a chiropractor in popular Bluff, Missouri. But in my case, we're doing seven days a week. But I don't recommend that to you because in addition to all that posting, you need to monitor and respond to the comments by others day in, day out, forever. That is a big commitment that may or may not be appropriate for your particular business. Now I'm going to tell you, there is a definite role for social media in the ongoing marketing of your business, but it's not the place you need to pay your initial attention to. One of the reasons is that on Facebook and the others, not everyone is a customer. Most are looking to see family photos. Some, some are there to get information, but a far fewer are there to buy now. Those who are looking to buy now are said to have commercial intent. It's a key concept, commercial intent. An example of commercial intent that permeates all of internet marketing is keywords. Now what are keywords? Keywords are the th actual words that people type into Google when they're going to do a search for whatever. So if someone is searching for what would be a good present for my Aunt Bertha, the keyword in that case is what would be, my, would be a good present for my Aunt Bertha. Well, not everybody types out long sentences like that, but they type in a word or two or three when they're searching, and that is a keyword or a keyword phrase. Now, if someone types in digital photography, they may be looking to buy a camera from you, but they might also be looking for examples. They might also be looking for instructions. They might also be looking for general information. They might just want to see some pretty pictures. However, if somebody goes to Google and types in the keyword Kodak G-725A, they might be looking for a camera. They might be actually getting pretty close to buying a camera. That's a commercial intent keyword as opposed to digital photography, which is a far more likely looser keyword that might be digital, it might be commercially intent, but may also just be information based. Another example, someone types in landscaping. They might be looking to get some ideas on the types of bushes to put in the front of their house or maybe some instructions on how to do, grow, do roses or whatever. If they type in landscape contractor, there you've got an example of a word that's got commercial intent. They're looking for a contractor. That's what you want to have them looking for if you are a landscape contractor. Another example, somebody types in chiropractic. They may well have a bad back and might be looking for some help and some advice, but if they type in Minneapolis chiropractor, it's far more likely that they've got that bad back and are actually looking for some help. Now, something else that's important that you understand, critically important that you understand in terms of internet marketing for your business is something we're not going to cover a lot other than what we're going to say just this moment, and that's conversion. Conversion. What do we mean by conversion? Well, the bottom line is that at a minimum, at a minimum, internet marketing is a two-step process. The first step is getting traffic by being found. Your essential first step is having people find your internet marketing and then to click on it. Once they click on it, once they go to your site, it's up to your web page or whatever you've set them to, to convert them into a customer. So 
one part of internet marketing is being found. The second part is converting them into action. Now, I talked about most small business websites stinking. This is where they stink. They're not effective in the way they go about converting that viewer that comes to their site into taking action in a way that is beneficial to them. There are two main things that I look at when I'm doing an evaluation of a website in terms of conversion. Now, there's a lot of other things that I do when I'm doing an analysis of a website, but in terms of conversion, I want to see a call to action. If you want if you want them to phone you, I want to see your phone number in big unavoidable block letters on your website and if I, you can put it up there three times, put it up there three times. I'm serious about that. Multiple locations of your phone number telling them call me is maybe ugly, maybe not the prettiest graphics. Well, it can be, but it's not less important to be pretty than to have that call to action. If you want them to come to the store, let them know where you are, when you're open. Call to action. Invite them in. The other thing is I want you to have a lead capture. I want you to realize that most people that see your web page are going to click on to the next web page. But if you can stop them in their tracks and get them to give you their email address so that you can contact them in the future, you're ahead of the game. And there's no reason for you not to ask them to do that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. But today, we're going to primarily focus on how to get found online. The objective of internet marketing, there's two basic ones. The first is to attract available customers, and the second is to keep them. When it comes to attracting available customers, we're looking for that customer who is new to the market, they've just moved in, or who is unattached to the market. They may have been in your community for a long time, but they've not needed your type of service until now. They're unattached. They don't have an existing vendor or an existing vendor relationship that dictates that they're going to go to them rather than to you. And third, there's the guys who are dissatisfied. They've been to that other guy and they think he's crappy. They think that he doesn't know, his, or maybe an employee of his has got his nose out of joint or whatever. You've got people who are new in the market. You've got people who are unattached to the market. You've got people who are dissatisfied in the market. These are your most likely new customers. They're available and they're the ones most likely that are going to go to Google and search for someone such as you. To do business with. Now once you've got them, you want to keep them and that's where social media and internet marketing in terms of follow-up with email and text messaging is another way that you can keep in touch with people and help let them know about new opportunities to buy from you. So there are two parts to internet marketing. Again, we're going to focus primarily on customer attraction, but we'll talk about the other a little bit as well. So, the big question is, are you playing hide and seek with your customers? And the fact of the matter is that you are, unless you are effectively marketing yourself online. Face it, people are going online to find business opportunities to purchase goods and services from somebody. If you're not there, you're hiding. Now, where are they looking? I'm a Google person, not because I'm a fan of Google, but because Google has got the bulk of the market. You see this chart? They've got about two-thirds of it. Bing and Yahoo's got about a quarter of it, and there's a few others. Uh, Ask and AOL have got slivers, and there's actually another hundred or more small splinter little uh, search engine groups that have their little piece of the market at all. But in terms of internet marketing, the focus of this presentation is going to be on Google, but that doesn't mean that what we're saying here doesn't also apply to Bing and Yahoo and the others, but we're going to be kind of Google specific, and this is why. So the key again is. If you're in business, when people go online to search for you, you need to be found. And there's four basic ways 
to be found, and then two other major areas that we're going to talk about today. The best way to be found, maybe not the best way, one of the ways to be found is AdWords, then there's Google+, Plus. then there's Organic, then we're going to talk a little bit about video, and then we'll also mention some aspects that you need to pay attention to in terms of what we call mobile and permission marketing. So that's what we're going to cover in the next few minutes. Strap on, here we go. First, we're going to start with the anatomy of a Google search page. Now, I'm doing this because, you know, I've discovered that I know this stuff, but not all my customers do. I've been shocked sometimes about people who hired me to do AdWords and didn't even know what an AdWords ad was. So, from the get-go, let's start at the top. This is a Google search for the keyword chiropractor. This is the page that pops up if you happen to be in Minneapolis. That's me right here. I'm in Minneapolis. My computer knows that I'm in Minneapolis and therefore Google knows that I'm in Minneapolis. And that's important new development that not everybody fully appreciates and understands but is critical to understanding the way internet marketing works today as opposed to a few years ago. Now on the very top here there's a little box that says about 5,210,000 results Google was able to find related to the keyword term chiropractic. And they were able to rank all 5 million plus in 0.24 seconds. So in less than a quarter of a second, Google's algorithm was able to sort Who's number one, who's number two, who's number 27, who's 29, who's 55, all in a less than a quarter of a second. They've got a system of doing that and understanding the impact of how that system works and how it determines who shows up on top of this first page or not is what we're all about here today. So pay attention. So on the top, we've got a couple ads here that are kind of in a beige in area, and then we got ads on the side. These are AdWords ads or pay-per-click ads. These are advertisers. These are businesses like yours who have said that if someone clicks on my ad, I'm going to be willing to give Google some pennies or some dollars, depending on what the particular circumstance is, and just to get that person who's looking for a chiropractor to come to my website where I hope to convert him into a customer. So here on the right hand upper corner we see a map. Again we're in Minneapolis and this is a map of chiropractors who are Google knows about in the Minneapolis area and there's a lot of them. And we see that there's a number of highlighted dots A through F. There's seven of these big dots showing up on this map. This is the Google map and we're going to talk about that real shortly. On uh, the next, underneath the first two ads, we got a couple what we'll call organic listings. Sometimes there's a lot of organic listings, sometimes there's no organic listings at the very top. That varies by individual category. And what we're going to see is the next slide is what is immediately underneath that. Here's those same two organic ads. And here we get into the Google Places, Google Plus local business pages. And again, what these are, are these guys. The ones in the highlighted dots, they're showing up right here. In this column, there's again seven of them. Most often, Google shows up to seven. A couple years ago, when they first started this, they showed ten. Pretty much now they seem to have synced in on 7 as being the 7 pack that they show. That's occasionally, if they don't have enough people who have qualified to be in the 7 pack, you'll see 1, 2, 3, 5. But normally, in most markets and most competitive areas, they're going to list 7 businesses. And I'm telling you right now, and I'll tell you again, if you're in a marketplace, you want to be in the 7 pack on the first page of Google, period. Okay? Now I've highlighted here on the left, what they show on the left and when they have this Google pack is they show the name of the business, the title, and they show their URL, and they show some reviews, if they have any reviews, and they show if they've got a lot of reviews, here's one score 27 of 30, he's got a total of 35 Google reviews, this guy's just got one, this guy's got 13, this guy's got seven. 
We'll talk about that in detail a little bit later. So, Monopoly. Everybody knows the game of Monopoly. And everybody knows that what you need to do is you need to kind of line up as many properties on the side of the board as you possibly can. It'd be nice to have Boardwalk and, and Park Place, but the name of the game is to get as much real estate as you can. And if you've got all the listings, all the listings in a row, you've got a better chance that when someone comes around that corner, they're going to land on one of yours. In a lot of ways, internet marketing and what we're talking about here is like playing the game of Monopoly. The difference is that instead of Park Place and Venture Gardens and Marvin Gardens, Venture Place, Marvin Gardens, you know the names. Each of the listings that people show, see, back here, each of these is like a different property in Monopoly. And you can show up in more than one. In fact, if you really want to be the billionaire on Monopoly, you want to show up in as many as possible. I have a colleague who is, shows up, one of his clients shows up nine out of ten times on the first page of Google results. What does that mean to that client? It means that darn near everyone that comes looking for their main keyword is going to see their listing. Do you think that helps their business? Absolutely. So the name of the game in internet marketing is not just to be there once. If you can, you want to be on that first page of Google results for your major keywords as often as possible so that you can dominate, so you can monopolize the attention of prospective customers and drive them to your page. Okay? Key concept. You can't afford not to be on the internet and marketing your business. There is just no way. Now, when I talk to many of my local businesses, they say, well, everybody knows that I'm here. They drive by every day. Everybody in the neighborhood drives down 34th Avenue or Broadway or whatever street you happen to be on. They see my sign. They know I'm here. I've been here for 30 years, whatever. I have a question for you. What color is a yield sign? You know, a street sign, a yield sign? Think about it. Write down your answer. Now the odds are that a lot of you are going to get this right. But there's a lot of us older folk, such as myself, baby boomer that I am, both my wife and I got this question wrong here a few weeks ago when it was posed to me for the first time. What color is a yield sign? Well, I knew exactly the answer. The answer is yellow. Now, have any of you agree with me and said yellow? Well, unfortunately, it's not. It's red and white. And not only is it red and white, it's been their way since 1971. That's a long time ago. But in my mind's eye, it's yellow. Because that's what it was when I took my driving test way back when in the olden days. Now, some of you got it right and some of you got it wrong, and those that got it right might not realize this, but what the point is is that people can drive by your business day in and day out and day in and day out. They might even know you. They might even have been in your store, but they will forget about you. They're oblivious to you. They don't think about you as much as you think they do. They'll go to the Internet and they'll search and they'll drive by your store and go to your competitor if your competitor compels them to do so effectively by being visible when they're actually looking and by compelling them through a good converting web page presence. So even if you think everybody knows who you are, those new customers, those unattached customers don't necessarily and therefore you need to be online, period. Okay, so people go to Google and they want to search, and many of them are just going there for information. So not everybody that's searching is, is a buyer, but some are, and those are the folks you want to pay attention to if you want new customers. I've run into businesses, I swear, 
where they don't particularly care about new customers. And I just don't understand that because any business is losing customers on a regular basis. You got customers that are moving away, you got customers that die, you got customers that defect to the competitor for whatever reason. And if you have anything less than at least replacement, your business is dying. If you want to grow, your business needs to attract not only new customers, but more new customers than the old customers that you're going to lose through natural attrition. So where do new customers come from? We've mentioned this before, but people who moved into the neighborhood, defectors from the competition, people who are dissatisfied with prior vendors. Sometimes they come from referrals because somebody just really loved your business and get someone who used to go to XYZ to come to your shop. Not as many as you would like, I bet. I bet. Then there's the people who have had no prior relationship with a, a, a competitor because they don't, they're not in the marketplace frequently. You know, they've never had their chimney swept before. They've never had their sewer overflow. They've never needed whatever. And now that they do, they don't have any place to go, so they're searching for you. Those are the people that you want. Now, the surest way, the surest way to have them find you is to take out one of the ads on Google, the AdWords ads, the pay-per-click ads. These, again, are the guys on the top of the list. And uh, they're here, and then they're along the side. And some of these go down to the bottom, and some are just up visible. The ones on top tend to cost more than the ones down below. But you know something? You want to seriously consider whether it's appropriate for your business to be an AdWords. Now here's some key considerations. You, if you can, typically want to be above the fold. Now again, above the fold is those places that can be seen without having to scroll down at all. Now there's ads and there's listings below this that you can't see when you first come to the page. So this top of the page, this headline area, is what we call above the fold, and that's a preferable place to be. But, you know, depending on your budget and depending on what people are searching for, they will often scroll down if they're actively looking for a merchant. So while it's important, if there are buyers, if they've got commercial intent, there's a greater chance that they actually will scroll down the page than if they're just looking for somebody that's got some basic information on X, Y, or Z. The actual keywords that they type in are critical. Again, we talked about commercial intent. If you have commercial intent keywords, those are the ones you want to buy. You don't want to be spending money on people who are just looking for information. So when you set up an AdWords campaign, it's important that you or your advisor focus on those keywords that are most likely to have commercial intent so that if they click on it, they're actually a hot prospect and not just somebody that's looking, looing and searching for maybe basic information that they can get elsewhere. Frankly, you want to get them when they're ready to buy, not when they're just thinking about learning about your topic area. You may have more than one keyword. In fact, typically, you probably should have tens to hundreds to thousands of different keywords. If you have plumber, if you're a plumber and you are searching for the keyword plumber, you're going to get a lot of clicks that they're going to be garbage clicks, or for, way more garbage clicks than, than commercial intent clicks. However, if you're a plumber, you might want to have fix my hot water heater as a keyword, or repair sump pump as a keyword, rather than plumber. And if you are a plumber, you might want to have separate pages on your website for each of these topics as well. But that's getting a little more advanced than we can cover right now. So we got a lot of territory to go over. A key in an AdWords campaign is the actual ad text. Now, what I like to do and do for my clients is that whenever I have an AdWords ad, I actually have two of them, at least two, but typically two of them, and I want to monitor which one is doing better than the other in an effort to always have the best converting ad show up on top. 
as I just mentioned, the landing page is critical. So sump pump page, if you got an ad on sump pumps, I want them when they click on that ad not to go to your home page, not to your main page, but to a separate page on your site that deals with sump pumps. If you have uh, hot water and somebody looking for a hot water heater repair, I want them to go not to your page on sump pumps. I want them to go to a page on hot water heaters. Do you follow me? This is important. It's important for a number of reasons. One, it helps you get a lower cost in terms of your ads. When the ad directly relates to the landing page, Google realizes that and Google tends to give you what they call a higher quality score and the result is is that the people who go from your ad on some pump to a page on some pump are getting what they're looking for that means that they're far more likely to stay on that page and actually take action it's going to be con con continuity in their mind they're searching for some pumps they click an ad about some pumps they're taking a page about some pumps they're winning their search they're getting what they're looking for far more likely that they're then going to follow through and take the direction, your call to action on your particular page. Google sees that they've clicked on your ad. They say, okay, this ad is converting. They say that they're going to the page. They're taking action on that page. And Google can tell whether they've clicked back or have gone elsewhere. And all this adds up to a better quality score and ultimately to a lower cost per ad for you. And we don't have time to go into great detail on why Google Pays charges you less if you get clicked on more often, but it's in their interest and it's in your interest to do so. key thing about AdWords and why it's important to local businesses is that you can actually define the geographical area in which your ad shows up. You can say that I want to get the people that live within three miles of my shop. You can have two shops, three shops. You can set up separate campaigns that specify each individual shop. You can have it set up so that it just shows up in your zip code. You can have it show up so that it shows up within 30 miles of your area. If you're in Minneapolis, you can have it show up in Minneapolis but not St. Paul or Minneapolis and St. Paul or any such combination. Key thing about AdWords is that you can hone in on your specific targets. So even if you are a pizza shop that serves the two mile area around your particular neighborhood you can advertise just in that area and only people in that area will see your ad and that means that you can be in the marketplace on AdWords and do so effectively. Basic guidelines I think that an AdWords ad should get at least one out of 100 people that sees it to click on it. If it's don't, you need to work on the content of that ad to get a higher percentage of them to click on it. You can think about it this way. You don't pay for an ad that no one clicks on, but if only less than 1%, Google's going to start charging you more and more for that or putting you further and further down the list where you're less likely to get seen by your potential customers. So you want to aim at least 1%, and I like to get them up to 3, 5, 6, or better percentage, if at all possible. A certain percentage of people that buy, that click on your ad are going to buy. Not everyone will. Okay, your pages aren't going to convert 100% unless you got a super good offer, and they're just not. Okay, so say that one out of five people that comes to your page is going to buy, and it costs you two dollars for that click. That means that it's going to cost you ten dollars for every single person that comes to your page and ends up buying. If your product that you're selling is giving you a profit of $15, $20, $50, $100, you're more than willing to pay $10 to get those five people to click to get one person to convert. If your click is costing you $12 and you're only getting one out of 10 people to actually convert and buy, you now have got about a $120 expenditure per customer, you darn well better be making a profit on that sale of well in excess of $120. If you're only making $100, you're losing money. This is the important arithmetic that you need to understand in terms of AdWords advertising. If it's paying, 
If you're tracking your results and you're paying attention to what's going on and AdWords is working for you, you will want to do as much AdWords advertising as is possible. If on the other hand, the ads are costing you more than what your profit is, you either need to change your ad, change them, and there are techniques in the split testing that can help you get there. So you might give it a shot and a trial for a period of time, but if it works, you want to do it. If it doesn't work, you got to go on other ways, okay? AdWords ads can cost from pennies a click to, I've seen them up to 50 bucks, okay? So you got to really be making a profit on a $50 ad. In general, most of the markets my clients are working in, they're paying between 2 and $8 for their AdWords ads. So you, know, you got some arithmetic to do when you're forking out that amount of money just for people to come to look at your website. It is a very viable way of driving customers from a targeted geographical area to your web page. If your web page is set up in such that it converts properly and you got a good product, you're not only getting a customer the first time, you're getting a lifetime of repeat business from that customer. So it might even be worth your while to lose money on that initial sale to develop a new customer. Again, that lifetime value of a customer is another important concept that we will just mention and go on. So when I manage an AdWords campaign, I want to look at getting the most clicks for every vision that people have of the ad. If they see it a hundred times, I'd much rather not have them just one person click. I want two, four, five, six, seven, eight people to click on it. That's called the click-through rate. I want to take negative keywords. I've got a customer who does water uh, damage restoration, and we had he, he had an, an existing campaign. He was talking about water damage repair. And he was getting people who were clicking on his ads who wanted to get water damage repair of their cell phone that they dropped into the toilet of their computer that got wet on the rain or whatever. We had to go into his campaign and add negative keywords. No, we don't want people with cell phones. We don't want people with computers. We don't want blackberries. We want people who've got a flooded basement. That's who our market is. And so by using negative keywords, we're able to define his market. AdWords uh, has some demographic abilities. You can kind of guess what the ages of people are. You can kind of pick sex. It's not as effective a demographic screen as Facebook has, but there are some demographics you can use. So if you're only serving women uh, as your primary customer, you can set up your AdWords campaign so that it focuses primarily on women users. Google knows to some extent uh, whether they're female or male. Some computers are used by both, so it gets a little fuzzy there. And ultimately, when I manage a campaign, I will harp on what can we do to make that landing page convert a little bit better. So I spent a lot of time on AdWords. It is the easiest way to quickly get on the first page of Google. And here's just an example of a split test. This is a client of mine in Long Island, New York. They, they do, they install Hunter Douglas fabric blinds, and that is a sideline. They do cleaning of them, and we've got dozens of different keywords that they use, one of which is drapery cleaning, and here, just as an experiment, we discovered that drapery cleaning got, didn't get a lot of traffic in their, their geographical area, but it got enough that it converted some business, uh, and so we experimented. for We had drapery cleaning without any punctuation, uh, and then we put one up with a question mark after it, and that did really well. So we tried a draper cleaning again with the colons, with, with semicolons around, uh, with quote marks around it. And we discovered that still the one with question marks was doing much better. It got 6.73 conversion rate, whereas the one with quote marks just got a, just under a 3% conversion rate. So what's going to happen here is we're going to pause the drapery cleaning ad with the quotes around it and focus on drapery cleaning with a question mark and we might mess around with some of the wording in the body of the ad to see which one does better. This split testing is a very valuable way that we have to improve your AdWords campaign. So that's AdWords. It's a way that you can buy your way into the top page of Google and get there virtually overnight and start getting business and customers.
The downside is that you have to pay for that traffic. The upside is that if you know what you're doing, you develop your page properly, you put together a plan campaign, you experiment, you decide which keywords are working best for you, you focus your efforts, you can actually know what kind of results you're getting from the AdWords campaign and really turn it into a traffic generator and a cash flow generator. Next topic is Google+. Plus. I want you to hear this very clearly. If there's one thing, and only one thing you do, you want to optimize your Google Plus Business Places page. Period. This is the mandatory thing that every business that's serious about business needs to do. This Google Plus local page are these seven listings, the seven pack that I mentioned before. They show up on the first page of Google for the last vast majority of local searches or keywords that are local searches. If you're serious about your place in the internet marketing and you want business from new customers, you must try to get into this top seven people. See the map, all the other dots, all these other little dots, they're not on the Google Plus local pages, first page of Google results for the keyword. They're someplace else. They're losing customers. People will come to this and look at the map. One of the key things about what people are looking for is proximity. They want to find somebody close to them. So yeah, if you're way over here in the far right, you might actually click on that little dot and go there. But, you know, Google knows where you are. They're showing the ones that are closest to you, period. So this is important. You want to get on Google Plus local page. Now, you can sign up for your Google Plus and do this all yourself. I'm serious about it. There's no real magic to getting yourself listed. You just need to know what to do and how to do it. And here's the keys that are important that you understand. It's basically the same thing that was in that book that I wrote about how to get to Google Places pages on top of the map. Uh, now it's Google Plus Local. A little bit different, but essentially the same. First thing, you need to actually claim the site. You need to go into Google, find your listing, and then say, yep, that's me. I'm the owner, and verify it. And they have a process to verify it, usually by phone and or postcard in the mail. You need to fill in a code and say, yep, that's me. You need to completely fill out the site. Now, we've seen a lot, a lot, a lot of businesses that have done the bit minimum of filling out their site. Google wants you to fill it all out. If you fill it all out, they're going to rank you higher than the people who only do the minimum. Fill out the information. It's hard questions like, what are your hours? Do you take credit cards? Which ones do you take? These are, these are hard questions that only you can answer. Well, not only you, but, uh, you know, this isn't difficult. You just got to fill in the information. A little more difficult is they want to see pictures of your business. They want to see 10 photos. And so you want to put up a minimum of 10 photos on the site. You can put up a photo of your logo. They can put up a photo of your big toe. Google doesn't care. You do. You need to get up 10 photos. They like to see videos. YouTube is owned by Google. Google likes to see that you've got five YouTube videos posted to your Google Plus page. We'll talk about videos in a little bit. Videos are not as difficult as you may think. You need to get five of them up there. You need to get reviews. Businesses that have got positive reviews are going to get ranked higher and higher on the Google Places pages. And more importantly, the people that come to look for you, if they see that there's a lot of reviews, if they see that there's positive reviews, that you've got a high ranking in the reviews, that's what's going to matter most in the future. It's not as important today as it will be tomorrow, but tomorrow's going to be here real soon, and you need to be paying attention to reviews. We'll talk about that in a moment. You need to have citations. Citations is something we'll talk about in the next slide. 
citations are you're being listed on other sites. That gives Google credibility that you are in fact in business and that you're serious about business. If you're serious about being seen online, they're more willing to rank you as such because they want their customers to know they're dealing with a serious business person and not just somebody who filled out a form. They do that by checking and seeing that you are listed on a lot of other locations and you want to do that. They know that they check the quality of your website. If it's a rotten website, uh, bare bones, doesn't have some of the things they're looking for in terms of privacy policies and so on, they're going to rank you a little bit lower. This isn't as important as some of the other factors, but it's clearly a factor in the equation of who gets in the top seven, as are the number of backlinks both to your website, that helps make it credible, and now in the new Google Plus is possible to get backlinks to your Google Plus page. This is kind of a new evolution that we have uh, just begun to see and don't know the full impact of. So what are citations again? Google wants to see that you got a Facebook page. They want to see a Twitter account. You don't have to have all these things. But surprise, surprise, they want to see that you've, you've claimed your Yahoo local page and your Bing local page. You know, they're competition, but if you're there, that means you're serious. If you're not there, maybe you're not so serious. So you also need to fill out a Yahoo page and a Bing page. You need to get listed on Insider Pages, Super Pages, Judy's Book, Merchant Circle, Yelp, YellowPages.com, City Search, Kudzu, Local.com, Yellowbot, and there's actually hundreds and hundreds more. The ones listed here are the most important ones. The ones listed here are the most important ones, but there's several hundreds, if not thousands, of additional directories that you can be listed in, and what I do is I make sure that people get listed on these, and then we work on getting some of the others, because it builds breath, and that's a good thing in the long run. So it's important that you get listed elsewhere. We talked about reviews. Reviews online are word of mouth online, and they are now important and even more important in the future. Here again is a search for dental implants in Minneapolis. You see this guy has got a score of 28 out of 30 with 70 Google reviews. He's on the top of the listings of the Google Local Plus. Odds are that people are going to see that he's nearby, if he is. And they're going to see his reviews, and they see he's got a lot of reviews. Very likely, people are going to go look at those reviews, and since they've got a high score there, they're going to be confident that they can use this person as a, as a resource. So, again, people look for proximity, and then they look for credibility. And what Google is doing is they're highlighting people's credibility by getting and posting reviews. You want your customers, you want your happy customers to post reviews because there are bad customers out there. There's anonymous customers out there that can leave reviews on your business that aren't so nice. Disgruntled former employees, the occasional, oops, whatever the cause, sometimes competitors will leave reviews the bad side of reviews online is that people can leave reviews anonymously, which means that they can trash you and your business. Now, there's only one thing you can do about it. And that's not to say, I don't want reviews. You need reviews. But you're going to occasionally get some bad reviews, and the only thing you can do about bad reviews is to bury them. It's almost impossible to get a bad review removed, no matter how bad no matter how irresponsible, no, how, how, no matter how untrue, once it's up there on the internet world, it's up there. So what you got to do is you got to bury it. And the way you do that is you need to have a strategy to proactively get your good customers to say nice things about you. So for some of my clients, I've created what we call social igniter cards. And I'm going to just show you a generic example here. And it doesn't have to be this. What I typically do is little two-by-two two little forms that I give to people that includes a, a QR code that they can scan into their telephone and or a shortened URL code that takes directly to the Google Plus page where it reviews 
for your particular business. We get a shortened code in there so it's not so it shows up and it makes it easier for your customer to take action. Many customers will say, hey, that was really great, they love you, whatever. You know, you'll say, tell your friends. And maybe they will, most of the they won't. If they say something positive about your business, you want to give them something that they can take home and they can actually re more easily leave a review. And again, if you pass out 100 of these, you might get five positive reviews. But you want those reviews, and you need to systematically do that day in and day out as part of your business. Now, if you have appointments, a doctor, if you're a dentist, whatever, and you give people appointment cards, why not print something like this on the back of the appointment card? You know, if they're satisfied, they're going to leave a positive review, and they're going to build your positive review base, and that is really the name of the game. Now, to do that, they have to join Google+. Plus. We'll talk about that in a moment, too. That's a quirk, but you want to encourage them to do that. Online reviews, whether they're good or they're bad, matter, and they're going to determine the effectiveness of your business and the number of new customers you get. Google ranks your customers' likes on their circles results. What does that mean? If somebody has liked you, and given you a positive review, anyone that happens to also be in their Google Plus circle will tend to see your listing ranked higher than it would otherwise be. Here's how it works. Sue likes your business and gives you a Google Plus like. She happens to be in a circle with Mary. Mary looks for the keyword related to your business. Say you're a chiropractor. She looks for a chiropractor because her friend, with whom she is a Google Plus relationship in her circle, has previously liked you. That means that you are going to get a preferential listing in her search. This is Google's strategy to bring the reviews and to, to take them into the next level. This is the future this is what's going to make reviews even more powerful. This is why you want as many of your customers as possible to join Google Plus and to give your listings A plus. And if you can get all of your fellow businessmen in your immediate area to kind of join together and encourage Google Plus and cross reference each other, you're going to build your business far more rapidly than you would otherwise. I talk about all this reputation management in Google Plus on one of my many different blogs. I've got a blog called GetMyPhoneToRing.com. I encourage you to go there. There's two things in particular. There's a video on Google Alert, which is a way that you can use to keep track of what people are saying about you. And then I've got a webinar. It's about a 30-minute webinar that goes in far more detail about uh, reputation management. Next topic is permission marketing. This is email marketing. This is text marketing. Basically, I told you that you needed to have an opt-in form, something on your page to capture leads. What you want to do on your pages is you want to have a freebie, something that people can get that if they sign up and give you permission to either email them or to text them. So if you're a chiropractor, again, you might have a small report, three to five pages long, that says how to keep your back healthy, whatever. If you're a plumber, how to unplug your drain, uh, five steps or tips or whatever. It doesn't really matter how much and how long this little thing is, is that if you are online, you can have this so that it's automatically downloaded through an autoresponder service so that people get the information in the middle of the night if they care on an automated basis. It is a critical way in which you can offer something for free that they can get, and they can get it by giving you their email address or permission to text them, and then you have the ability to keep in contact with them over time. Very powerful, something that you need to do. 
once you do that, once you have them on your list, you're able to send them messages about a new offer. You can send them holiday greetings. You can keep in touch with them. You can inform them if they need, if you have a product that takes a while to sell, multiple, takes multiple touches, you can tell them and give them the information they need to make a wise built buying choice. There's a lot of potential once you have permission to be in contact with the person, you don't want to spam them. You don't want to deluge them with contacts. But you do want to provide them value. And by doing so, you set yourself up as being an expert, as being reliable, as being a resource. And you keep your name in front of them, which makes it far more likely that they will eventually become not only a customer, but a lifelong customer. Very important concept. Videos. We talked about videos briefly. People like videos. YouTube is a huge resource and you can take a video of your business or of your products or how to use your products or demos or whatever and you can post them on YouTube and it's got a huge viewership. Sometimes, if you really know what you're doing, you can get a video that's been posted on YouTube to actually show up on Google. Now, I typically am able to get this done in three to six weeks in many markets. Not everywhere, but in many markets. And here's what happens. When I'm successful, as I was with this tree removal company that basically I did a swap with, he cut down a tree in my backyard, and I got his video to show up on the first page of Google results. And you see what happens when Google posts a YouTube video is they actually give a thumbnail sketch. And what that does is it draws people's eyes to that listing. So imagine this page. It's got a number of different listings. And there's this little picture there. Obviously, people are going to go to it. And even without clicking, they see Minneapolis tree removal and a phone number and a YouTube. They might even call without clicking on that listing. They click on the listing. It takes them to the video. In the video, you also need to have a call to action and so on, too. But uh, again, I think you get the, the, the point here. So video is much easier than you may think. There are services. I use a service called Animoto. You can make 30-second videos there for free. I have upgraded to a, more, to a paid package. I was able last Saturday to crank out five different, very similar, but different videos in less than 40 minutes. Now, that was for a particular client, and we were more interested in getting a number of different videos so that we could fill out our Google Places page properly. But they were good, high-quality videos. They were basically were, had a series of 8, 9, 10 different pictures. We threw a little text in. We mixed and rotated the pictures around, and it came out super, super. There's also screen capture. There's Jing. Also a free product where if you take a PowerPoint slide, you can make movies up to five minutes for free. This particular video is being done with Snagit because it's longer than five minutes. I bought the Snagit package. It's under 100 bucks. This entire presentation is a PowerPoint presentation that I'm speaking over on my computer, and I'm capturing it with Snagit and convert it into a video. You can upgrade even more to Camtasia if you want to do editing. You'll see that this is a pretty straightforward presentation. I'm not doing any editing, but there is Camtasia. Then there's similar products for Apple products. Also, my whole first series of videos I did with what was called a flip camera. Uh, you can use your cell phone. These videos that we're talking about should be short. 30 seconds to 2 minutes is basically what I like to see videos use for internet marketing. Think of it as a TV commercial. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. Have a call to action in the video. And that's really the name of the game. Okay. Next topic. Real quickly. Mobile. Why do you need mobile? What do I mean by mobile? I'm talking about mobile phones and tablets. The growth in that market has been huge. You all know it. You've all seen in the last three to five years a huge surge in movement to smartphones and into iPads and other tablets. Google is seeing a 400% increase in the number of searches on mobile devices. The future is mobile and you need to be prepared for it. So here's what happens. 
you've got an existing website and someone goes to it and it's going to look similar to the one on the right here. It has got really tiny type. They scrunch the whole website into so that it shows up on the screen, which makes it impossible for anybody to read or to act on. Or what will often happen is that they will just show the upper left-hand corner of your website and they'll have to scroll over on their cell phone and they just don't do that. In contrast, here's a Domino's page. It's got the Domino's logo on top. It's got a series of five buttons. You click on those buttons, you get more information. You find out where to go. You get a quick list of the 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 pizzas available and the prices. You can click and tap and call automatically to the site. You may have a web page, and you might not want to hear this, but the fact of the matter is today you now need to have a second web page, one that is mobile ready. There are two separate things. You now need to have two websites. Now, thankfully, because mobile websites are or can only have so much information in them. They are not necessarily as expensive as a regular website. But you're making a mistake if you do not have and move to creating a mobile website as soon as possible. More and more people are going to better and better cell phones. The percentage of people with smartphones is maybe 20 to 30 percent today it's going to be 50 to 80 percent in the next two years you got to do it you got to set up a separate mobile website now here's something you need to understand most of your competitors don't have a mobile page if you do and they don't you're going to win because google knows whether you have a mobile ready page or not they can tell and what they're doing is that if someone does a search on a cell phone, they're showing them the results of people that are mobile ready. And as a result, if you have a mobile page, you're going to get that view and your competitor isn't. People will see you, not your competitors. That means ka -ching. Money in your pocket. Now finally, our last topic. We're going late. Search engine optimization. This is organic listings. This is the free listings. This was the holy grail of internet marketing of two years ago. And it's still valuable. It's still important. But for a local business, and two years ago, if you search for chiropractor online, you would see a chiropractor in Los Angeles or the Chiropractor Association. These days, you get far more local results, so it is possible for a business particularly when someone types in chiropractor Minneapolis, for you to show up in the organic listings and to also have that organic listing and a Google Plus listing and maybe that video listing and maybe an AdWords ad and you are beginning to play that Monopoly game that we talked about earlier. It's important, but in my mind, instead of being the number one topic, it is now the number four topic of rank order of importance. Local businesses still should be paying attention to organic listings. It's just that the others are that much fact more important. Now there's two basic elements to search engine optimization to help getting a regular web page to be seen. We call these on-page factors and off-page factors. Among the on-page factors, there's things like your URL, your actual web site. So I call myself, or one of my websites is Minneapolis Internet Marketing Consultant. It's not as important as it once was. But it was important in the past to have that Minneapolis in there. Because when somebody searched for Internet Marketing Consultant, they used to get the whole world. And if they wanted one from Minneapolis, they would type in Minneapolis and I would pop to the top. Well, Google's degraded the value of that somewhat in recent months, but it's still not a bad idea to include your geography and your URL. 
although it's less important than it once was. More important is to include that geography in what are called the title tags. That's the very top left top of the screen of your computer. It's Every page has got a title tag, and title tags are important. Can't get into a lot of detail about that right now. And then on also what is called the meta tags, the invisible part of your page, there's a description there that's important that you have some sales pitch for your business because that's what shows up when somebody does see your listing. That's the two lines that go under your listing. And it's not always what Google displays, but when they display it, it may as well be your best idea as to what's going to be most effective in capturing those eyes and getting them to come to your page. Also on your page is the headlines and what we call keyword density. So if you've got keywords if you know on your page that relate to the keyword terms that people are typing into their computers, it's more likely that they're going to see your page than somebody else's page. This is why you want to have separate pages for sump pumps, a separate page for hot water heaters, a separate page for leaky pipes, so then you can have each page focus on a particular thing so that it is congruent with what people are searching for. That's the on-page factors, and there's a lot to be said about that, but then the thumbnail, those are the key key deals that you want to be concerned about and I can help you with in terms of evaluating your particular website as to whether it is rankable or not. The next area is off-page factors. These are primarily backlinks. These are links from all kinds of other people's sites. Now we used to in the industry game this a lot. We were able to get tens of thousands of web of backlinks created almost on autopilot automatically and Google's kind of cracked down on that and in the long run that's a good thing. It's still important to generate these backlinks. So it's just more important that you do it in a more natural way and that you systematically go after good backlinks from credible resources that Google values and as well as a lot of little lesser ones. This is all what filters into what's called search engine optimization. These are the folks that are calling you every day or every other day or once a week or whatever it is and trying to sell you services. I'm telling you that while SEO is important, it's not as important as it once was. So in conclusion, my important takeaways that I want you to understand is that local businesses can market online to your local neighborhood area effectively. And in fact, local businesses must market online or you're going to lose out on all the new customers that are emerging in your marketplace and you're, you're going to lose customers through natural attrition, and in the long run you're hurting your business and you're going to go down the drain. On the other hand, if you can outcompete your competitors and get a better shot at getting the new customers, the available customers in your market, you stand a chance to grow. If you don't do it, your competitors will. So think about that. And finally, the big takeaways. Google Local Pages is a must. You absolutely must get your Google Local Pages set up. Reputation management and reviews. It is the future. It's what you absolutely positively need to start paying attention to and developing a progressive, ongoing, proactive strategy to get positive reviews. And mobile is here now. It's inevitable sooner that you get a mobile site up means money in your pocket. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Okay? Finally, you need help. You've got a business to run. You've got all the other stuff on your plate. You need someone, me or another competent internet marketing expert to assist you in developing an ongoing strategy. We used to put money into newspaper ads or TV ads or yellow page ads. You got to think of this as advertising. You're going after new customers. Today, you need to invest in hiring competent skills to help you manage your internet presence so that you're able to attract the new customers and to grow. My name is Earl Netwall. My phone number is 612-724-4392. You can email me at enetwall at gmail.com. 
I'm an official Google Engage agency, which means that if you decide that you want to do an AdWords campaign and it's a new campaign, I can float you $100 of free ads. You probably get a $75 coupons on a regular basis from Google anyway. But I can help you set up your AdWords campaign properly. I can help you in any of these aspects from evaluating your existing website to setting up your Google Places page to helping you rank a video to helping you create videos. Any of the topics that we've mentioned in this video. If you need help or would like some assistance, feel free to contact me. Again, the name is Earl Netwall. My phone number is 612-724-4392. I hope you found this presentation worthwhile. Have a great day. Bye-bye.